All right, so you're playing Maple Story. You head into Tria, and you see people like this playing their instruments, playing some really good music. And you think to yourself, "Oh boy, what if, what if I wanted to play my favorite song in Maple Story? Do how could I do that?" Well, um, I'm gonna assume that you already went through the Maple Guide that took you through the music tutorial, so you already know what music sheets are. You know what already know what instruments are. Um, you may not know where you can buy more music sheets. This is in Tria. This is like, if I could show you here, this is like the sort of southeast lower sector in Tria. That's where this guy is. He sells instruments. You already have a, a digital piano from the Maple Guide. Uh, he sells music scores, basic pre-written scores for you to train your uh, performance mastery, your basic. 3,000 character limit, uh, intermediate 5,000 character limit, and your mastery locked. You need to be you need to max out your performance mastery to buy these, but these are the advanced ones, 10,000 characters, and some outfits if you care for those. Now, as far as getting songs into the game, there's two ways you can do that. I'm gonna go to my house for a minute and get out of this. Now, method number one is easy. All you have to do is Google MS2 MML. This is what we would consider uh, the file type for a finished, a finished, a finished product, a finished song that you can import into MapleStory 2, and you know you don't have to do anything to it. Um, Google MS2 MML. You will probably find something like this. What's a good place? For these files, musicalnexus.net. Oh, look at that! I'm already here. Maple Beats standard music halls, and you've got, you know, your solos, and you've got ensembles. Nice and organized. This is a really good place to find um, your favorite song. But let's assume it's not there. In that case, we would have to go through method number two, which is not difficult. It's just tedious, and I'll explain why in a few in a few minutes. Now, this website is musescore.com. This is basically a repository for sheet music. And if you log into it, either by creating an account or in my case, through Facebook, you can simply search up a song. I'm gonna search Smile Meditation, song by Wolfbeck, good band, would recommend. And look at that. Sounds drony, but <laughs> I'll use this song as an example. Um, so now that I'm I'm logged in, so I can download this as one of these five formats. I want MIDI, so I'm gonna uh, download this in MIDI. I already have, so I'm going to open up a little my little Maple Story Two music folder here. Uh, next thing I need is to go to. This is basically the tool you're going to need. Uh, to actually get that MIDI into MML, which is a uh, musical notation language. And that's the language that we put into these scores. So if I double click on uh, really any completed guide, completed a uh, music score rather, you'll open up this menu, 10 tracks to work with, and each of them has these little bunch of different characters. These are notes and rests. This is music uh, notated through MML. Um, now, I'm not gonna teach you MML. I'm only gonna teach you actually just a few basic things, but um, you don't need to know really anything about composing, because we're not gonna compose. We're taking finished music and we're, we're translating it. That's what we're doing. Um, so as for your tools, this is what I would use or this is what I do use. Other programs are available, of course. But this is 3ML Editor. It, uh, from what I could tell, it is specifically designed to work with MML. More importantly, it can import MIDI and translate it to MML. And from that point, all we have to do is some minor tweaks and it's ready. Uh, so this right here is the link for that, if, if you can't read Japanese. Um, so I'm going to, I've already got this, you know, 
unzipped and packaged and ready to go and I've got all my stuff organized. So let's just get into it. I'm gonna double click on it, bring this over here. I'm gonna double click on it again and bring that over here. There's a reason to that. Empty thing, we've got tracks, doesn't matter. File, import standard MIDI file. And now we have, um, I'm gonna bring in that song. And uh, for this, uh, first I'm gonna do the, I suppose the standard import. This is actually the wrong way to do it, but I'll show why. So I'm gonna import this. It'll bring both tracks, and both tracks meaning these two tracks here, because this MIDI came from this sheet music, of course. Now, that sounds lame, and that's because MML is kind of quirky. Um, in a single given track of MML, there can only be one note playing at a time. So if you want something like a chord, you need however many tracks the chord is consists of. So in this case, it would be like, what is that, two, three, four? Four tracks here for this one chord. Pretty complicated, but easy enough. So I showed you the wrong way to import. We're gonna do the right way to import now. Imports any MIDI file, bring in our track, and we're gonna take these two metal boxes. This converts one MIDI track and splits it into multiple MML tracks. So for each track, we've got those chords now, or at least all the chords that were in one track. We can only import one track at a time through this. That's why I have the second window up. Import the first track. And now we've got chords for the first MIDI track, of course. Ah, now that one sounds like it's sped up a little bit. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. But for now, we just need to get all this information onto the next window. And to do that, I'm gonna hit Control T. You could also go to Track, Append Track. One, two, three, four. We're just adding tracks, that's all that is. I'm gonna hit Control A and Control C, Control V. Selecting everything, copying and pasting. And if I play it back, we have a finished song. Now, you heard that was weird before. Why is it playing faster, but it's playing on time here? Well, it may be this particular piece of software. I haven't tried um, bringing MML into other pieces of software. I don't think I have other pieces of software to be quite honest. But um, from what I can tell, the reason it's playing on time here is that notice in track one, we have this yellow tempo indicator. The tempo is 103 beats per minute. Uh, over here in the second window, no such, no such indicator. So that's probably why this one tempo and this one track seems to be governing the tempo for all the other tracks. However, this is all well and good in this piece of software, 3ML Editor 2. If we simply copied and pasted this information into the composing window, say we got rid of all this information and just pasted it here, it's not going to play on time. All the tracks, all the different notes are gonna play at different times. It's gonna sound really, really weird. Not what we're looking for. Instead, we're going to essentially, I can get rid of this now. We're going to essentially take this tempo, copy it, like so, and we're going to paste it at the same time. So this tempo appears at z the zeroth measure, 
the very start of the song, basically. Measure zero, tick zero. So at measure zero, tick zero, we need to paste this particular tempo at each and every track. And I'll do that now. Okay, so um, at this point, you think that we're done, right? We've got the tempo in all the tracks, everything should be lined up. Well, this is just the initial tempo. Most songs you might work with in this, in this way will probably have just that one tempo, but never assume. I'm going to scroll down track one, and I know for a fact, because I've worked on this before, that there are two more tempo changes. Here we go. One at 58, measure 58, tick zero, and measure 59, tick zero. The tempo slows down just a little bit, and I'll play this back. just to get the timing right on that little pause. That's the reason for it. So what we have to do is pretty much the same thing as the first one, right? We just have to take these tempos, put them in all the tracks at that particular time. So um, a notepad will help because there may be songs with just one tempo, as I said before. There may be songs with multiple tempos and in the same track, in track one, um, there may be tempos listed in other tracks as well that you'll have to keep track of. So having a piece of paper or a notepad open will be handy because this is where the tedious part comes in. So I'm just going to list this out here. T80 at measure 58 and T103 at measure 59. And now... We go into track two and we look for measure 58. Not just measure 58, but measure 58 ticks zero. And you'll see here, um, the only sort of, what would I call it? A time slot, I would call it a time slot. The only time slot we have for measure 58 is point, is at tick uh, 336, which isn't the time that we need. We need zero. So, but this is a single note or a rest rather. Well, this is the part where you have to know a little bit of MML. I'm going to write this out. So the parts that I'm gonna teach you for MML are basically just the length of things and a little join thing that I'll talk about later. So we see there's an R and a one. This means it's a whole rest, R for rest, right? Then down here, you see there's a C, C8. That means it's an eighth note of a C. So let me just write this out. One, not tab, enter. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, and 64. These are the numbers you have to work with. There's also the period. You'll see the period sometimes here, for example. A2 period, what does that mean? So this is an A note, this is a half note, but the period after it represents half of whatever number is in front of it. So in this case, the A note lasts for a half note plus a quarter note. So that length of time. Um, in MML, it's basically just a way to reduce the amount of characters you have to work with, and which is important because we have a character limit in the game. Let me bring this back up. And this back up too. Okay, so going back to our problem, we need to open up 58 tick zero. The way we do this is to go to, so let's go to the previous rest, R1, and I'm going to split this up. And R1 is equal to, we're not gonna add time, we're not gonna subtract time, we need to keep the amount of time the same, but we just need to split it up. That's all we're doing, we're splitting it up. So an R1 is equal to two R2s. And you'll see here, we've got another little slot, another listing in the 58th measure, but that's 144, it's still not what we need. So I'm gonna double click in the previous entry and split that up even more. So that's two fours. Again, not what we need. Previous, 
two eights. And there we are, it's opened up. I can double click on it, highlight it, I'll go behind, and that's measure 58, so that's a T80. And there you see it's listed correctly at the right time. It's very important you list them all at the right time. And they have to be listed, on top of that, they have to be listed throughout the, all of the tracks. If you've got a lot of templates to work with, that can be, it's, it's very tedious. Lots of busy work, but that's just how you got to do it. Um, so now that we've got this all split up and we've put the tempo right where it needs to be, let's uh, rejoin and sort of simplify all these numbers so we can save on character space. So let's see, this is a two and a four and an eight. And tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to take away this four and put a period in its place because a four is half of a two. Quarter, half of a half note. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense when you say it, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, now the next one, measure 59, we need to open that up. So that's pretty much the same deal. And notice how it was 336 in measure 58. So, you know, I could probably just do this. R8, T103, R2, point R8. Oh, well, that's at measure 60 now. I look dumb now. What were you thinking, man? All right, previous. Let's go to the previous one. Because that'll probably work out. R8, T80, T103, rather. R2, point R8. There you go. Now it's at measure 59. And that note, which I should have kept track of, by the way, before I started messing with the times, I should have kept track of where that note was. Because uh, if I had messed something up, I wouldn't know where that note was supposed to be. So if I had subtracted time, if I'd messed with the time in any way, I wouldn't know about it. It's important you list that when you're working. I didn't do that, I made a mistake, and I apologize. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're good here, track two done. Now for track three. Same deal, we gotta split this up. So I'm working with the previous entries to split them up in order to make space for the time that we need. So that's probably going to be 57 and 58 that needs to be expanded. So that's basically just the same as this, right? 336? Yeah, that 336 is there. It's starting to look familiar. So in that case, I'll just copy this, go over here, paste it. Aha, there you go. We can do the same thing. I'm only doing this because I know for certain that this was the result of splitting up a 336. Otherwise, if I didn't see that 336, I would have split it up manually. Track three, four rather, sorry. Track four, okay, that time slot is wide open, so we can just go ahead and plop it down, no problem. Okay, we're done with track four, let's move on to track five. Track 558, uh, we don't have tick zero, we don't have tick 336 either, so we can't just copy and paste like we did over here in track two and three. We're gonna have to split this up by hand, so Double click on the previous rest in this case. It's a rest. We're going to split this up into, let's say, fourths. So that's one, two, three, four. Still don't have it. Split the four into eight. Still don't have it. Eight into 16. Still don't have it. 16 into 32. And there we go. It's right here. T80. Now let's recompress. This is going to be half of 16. And let's see here. So this is simplified into two. We know that much. We could put some periods here. 
So I'm going to do hmm, 2 period R8 R32. Okay. And that note starts there, like where it should. Now for measure 59. Oh, we already have it. <laughs> Duh. We already have that slot open. Okay, so that works out. Track six. Measure 80, three, four, eight. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm guessing three, four, eight, huh? That sounds familiar, doesn't it? So let's take this, see if we can't find an R1 to plug that into. 348, which means this must surely be. Aha, uh -huh. funny how that works out. All right, track six, good to go. Track seven, what are we looking at here? 348. We're just finding the similarities. We're putting two and two together. If it worked once in those circumstances at a 348, it'll work again. Track number eight. Final track, we're almost done. We got another 348. So, boom. Ah. Okay, so now we gotta break this one up. But it's a 348. So in theory, we should be able to do that, right? Yeah, and then replace the 80 with a 103. Uh, now with an 8,000, a 103, thank you. So, and let me double check track one. One, two, three. Just three tempo changes. That's all we got. Same in the other tracks. Yes. Pretty sure, yes. It's important to make sure that you know how many tempo changes there are total. Because each and every track needs to have that information. Now, to get this information into each track, we split up rests because, by coincidence, those rests were the previous entries to the times that we needed. But, and I'm going to go a little bit off our assignment here to demo this because you need to know this. There's going to be some instances where um, you need to split up a note instead of a rest. And you can't just uh, you can't just write you know a eight a four period because that's not going to work out, and I'll explain why. Let's introduce a new character to our little lexicon of MML technology: the ampersand. This joins notes. Let's take this F quarter for example. I've soloed the track so you can hear it right there, this note right here. It's one note, it's very clearly one note. But if I split this up like we did the rests into F4 and F8, then you can kind of see there it becomes two notes. Play it back. So we can't just, if we need a time code at between let's say 288 and 336, we can't treat this like the rests and just split them up willy nilly. We have to use this ampersand to rejoin them, which I will show you. That becomes one note again. And that time slot disappeared. So we have to split them up to make the time slot appear, but we have to rejoin them after we input our tempo. That's very important, okay? So you gotta, when you have a note previous to the time that you want, you need to make sure you know how long is this note so that when you split it up, you you can you know, all right, so I gotta rejoin this, this, and this together, and that'll sound the exact same. 
So um, between 192, between 288, sorry, and 336, I'm going to split up this eighth note into 16th. So that's three notes now, but this is our hypothetical time that we want. This is a hypothetical example here. I'll just put like T75. Now I'll use the ampersand to join them together again. And that becomes one note. But you see the tempo is listed where we want it to. F16 and F16 and F8 will make one sustained note for that amount of time. Right, it makes sense. Um, important note, if you put the ampersand in front of a tempo, uh, won't work. Two notes. You gotta put it after. So this was A4. Boop, there you go. So all the tempos we have are in every track. One last thing we got to do before we start simplifying and um, putting this actually in the game. At the very top, the very uh, top of the track, each track really, after the tempo I'm going to put V10. V is for volume. And I believe you, you have volume of um, V can be 1 to 15, I believe. You would want to do about between 8 and 15 in order to be heard. Um, 10 is a very reasonable number. 15 is kind of loud, but um, some of the songs you'll be working with, if you use this method, you may want to change the volume of certain tracks because those tracks may be playing different parts. Like uh, if you're making a MIDI of um, a song with, with lyrics that has vocals, uh, you may need to make that part louder and put it over the instrumentation so you can hear it properly. But uh, in this case, we just want to put it all at V10. So I'll quickly do that. Okay. So every track knows what its tempo is going to be. It doesn't have to follow the leader. It has its own information to work with. At this point, um, we still have a lot of this green stuff. This is just... Um, placeholder text that tells you, in this case, what measure is what in this list, so you know what to work with. Um, we don't need that. We do have a character limit, so what I'm going to do is go to Track, Optimization op Option, Optimize All Tracks. And that's going to compress it down into the bare essentials. Sounds the same, it's just optimized. File Properties. That brings up your character count for each track. Now, if we add this together, get a calculator here. This is just about 6,000 notes, which means you have to use a 10,000 note sheet, which sucks. But, I mean, if you want it to sound this good, that's how it's going to be. So, you know how much it is. Now I'm going to save it. Go into my MML folder, go into my 10K folder, because I know it's 10K, and I'm going to replace the one I have. Last time I worked this, on this, I made a little bit of a mistake, so I'm just going to replace the one I have. Now I'll bring this over to my second monitor. Now I'll go in game, and now I'm, I'm open, I've opened up a 10K track, which is good. I'm going to go to my sound options and make sure the uh, instruments is highlighted. When you have the composing when you have the composing window open, uh, you can't hear the music. Uh, you can hear your character's voice, so that's going to be annoying. So make sure you have that turned off when you're listening to stuff. Now, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tracks, so we can get rid of this. And this is already a completed music thing, so I'll still have this when I exit out of this. I'll get rid of everything here. And I'll take my MML information and paste it here. And you'll notice um, it's kind of truncating itself. I don't know why it does that. I think it's because of, like the window size or something. But um, it's not 
too many wasted characters to matter, in my opinion. Um, if you're really tight on space, get go away. Then you can go ahead and you know try and make this one line. But um, for me, it's not too much of an issue. Now, let's play this back. That first note was weird, but I think that's just Maple Story. There you go. <laughs> it's kind of weird like that. Um, so that tempo change. Okay, that sounds good. I've, I've heard the real song, and I know that's everything is in time now. Everything is perfectly in time because we had those tempos exactly where we needed them to be. And that's good. Now, um, if this was a blank music sheet, I would hit Compose Score. Well, I would name it first, and I would hit Compose Score. Instead, though, I'm going to save the file. And this will save it as an MS2 MML, as that final product that you could find on... on, on, on <laughs> I got rid of the tab, but on um, Musical Nexus, I believe it was called. That's the kind of thing you would find there for download. Here, however, I'm just going to save it to my personal thing. I'm going to replace the one I already have because I know it's perfect. Um, and now I have it. And anytime I have a blank music sheet and I, and I think, you know what, I want smile meditation, then I'll just hit open. I won't hit save file. I'll hit open file. And you know what? There you go. And that's good. Or maybe I'll just, or maybe I'll just get some Joji, you know, will ye? Maybe I'll just do that instead. It's very good to have these things, so you don't have to start messing with this all the time, every time you want to get the same song. Um, so anyway, I hope this made sense. If, if there's anything I haven't covered, or if, if perhaps there's an issue that you've come across that I'm not able to answer, and I, I probably won't. There's a lot of... There's a lot I don't know about MML. You know, I only know about tempos, right? And splitting up and joining notes and stuff. So um, if there's a problem that I can't help with, Musical Nexus has forums. Uh, the official MapleStory forums are a good place to go, as well as the MapleStory 2 Reddit. I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that someone will be able to help who is um, years more experienced in MML than I am. Man, that's not an exaggeration too, because MML's been in Nexon games since Maple Story, not Maple Story, uh, Mabinogi, really old. But that had a composing mechanic too, and it used the same uh, notation. Um, so I hope this was helpful. I hope I got everything right, and I hope you have a good day. I'm gonna have a good night. It's 11:30 in night. I'm gonna go to bed. Bye.